If you looked at a few industries and said, hmm, this, these are the ones that most likely will get disrupted first with uh, digital currency as the vehicle, and whether it's the Lightning Network or other protocols that start to build up on top of that, what, what industries do you think are going to come to the plate first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, the ones that we kind of see already today are definitely going to be, are going to continue to grow and really disrupt. And the ones that we see a lot of right now are number one, gaming. Um, yeah. We have a gaming company called Thunder Games, which is a company of ours. And they, uh, when you're, when you're playing the game, you can essentially collect like, you know, these little tokens in the game, which is pretty standard for, you know, just games across the board. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, is as you collect those games, those are like, that's real money that you're collecting. Yep. And then you can cash yep. out those winnings of your game into, into your own wallet. And so that really changes the, the value proposition of like playing these games instead of earning these okay. like, you know, kind of fake, fake coins that really mm -hmm. like don't matter for anything. And you're actually earning real money. And the, the gaming company can, you know, with, you can withdraw those uh, into your own wallet. And so I think that that's a big space that is going to be disrupted is gaming because you can really change the incentive on, you know, what it, what it means to play the games and interact with them. Um, yeah. So gaming is definitely one, you know, podcasting, like we've already talked about. And then I think just uh, the whole uh, streaming services. So ge more generally mm -hmm. speaking of like video, um, audio, whatever it is, you can take those same um, methods that, you know, Adam has done in the podcasting space and apply, you could apply it to YouTube. You could apply it to Netflix. You could apply it to any of these things that are streaming and you can do switch it from a subscription base to a strictly consumption base. And I think that right. really anything that is using um, streaming services like that will really, will, will really start adopting this. And when you think about, you know, Netflix, okay, you pay a set amount of money per month for Netflix, whether you're use it or not, you're paying that amount of money, you know, Maybe at the beginning of the coronavirus, maybe people were watching more Netflix than they had previously. You know, you're on vacation for a couple of weeks, like you're probably not going to watch Netflix very much. So instead of paying a set amount every month, you can just, okay, I'm watching, you know, an hour right now and you pay for the hour and then, you know, you don't pay when you're not watching it. And so it really sure. just changes the game on like how, how to how to pay for the services that you use, which has historically not really been possible. You know, with credit cards, it doesn't make sense to run your credit card for three cents every hour. Like, you know, the, it just doesn't make sense, which is why the subscription model has really you know, been created. And so this really changes the game on any kind of streaming service to incorporate into uh, these, you know, streaming payments and to make it a more of a consumption model. Yeah, for sure. I, I think when you, when you look at gaming, cause gaming is, is one that mm -hmm. I think is, is ripe, ripe for yeah. integrating this kind of technology. I'm wondering why someone like a Twitch or even an EA Sports or, or many of the bigger gaming companies, uh, even if you look at what, what's happening with Fortnite and, and all of what they're trying to do, especially around the challenge they're dealing with in terms of Apple and, and kind of that gatekeeper scenario that we're dealing with, this mm -hmm. would seem to be a channel for those kinds of companies to really kind of go in that direction. Do you see anybody, other? I know there's a handful, but do you see any of the majors starting to really explore this potential opportunity going in a direction like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like me, I haven't been maybe so in tune to the gaming space to know about that, but I could, I, I have just kind of heard through grapevines that yes, I think that a lot of these people are like at least exploring the opportunities because I, like you said, I think it's, it's the prime, like it just, it makes too much sense to not go into this. Right. So right. I think that there's a lot of people that are starting to look into it and explore them. I think that's, not even, I think outside of gaming, there's a lot of companies that are looking into these technologies that maybe haven't said it, you know, there's kind of behind closed doors. They're just experimenting with it, seeing what they can do and seeing how they can incorporate it into their products that they've had, you know, that they, that yeah. they already have. And so I think that there, there's a lot of people that are exploring these opportunities, um, gaming and otherwise. And I don't, whether they've said it or not, I think that there's a lot of, of interest and a lot of people researching how they can use this in, in their products and, and how they can use it to reach just a whole new audience.